Hi, this is Dan and Dance, and in this video I'm gonna show you how I made the Blinding Lights Just Dance fan made video. So let's get straight into it. The idea. Like every project, it all starts with an idea. In this case, once I and my two friends involved, whose Instagrams will be in the description, had chosen which song would work on, the image of a boulevard at night illuminated with lots of lights came to my mind along with the forward and backward movements of the camera and the coach. To get more ideas and inspiration, I watched the official music video like four times until I had something more consistent in mind. The DIY face. We needed a chroma set, but we didn't have one, so I decided to make one myself. We also needed a structure to hold the cloth, so I came up with a design for a structure with PVC pipes. So, my father and I went to the store and bought all we needed. I have to say, my father helped me with all the crafting parts, so... Thanks, Dad. We weren't sure if the structure would stand stable, so we did the first experiment. We built the PVC tube structure and it worked! It didn't fall. But we didn't know if it would sustain the cloth's weight as well. We left that experiment for another day. My mom and I went to a fabric shop and bought all the cloth. The widest it could be was 2.8 meters, so I had to buy 10 meters long to cut it into halves and sew them together, making a piece of 5 per 5.6. My mom helped me with the sewing, so thanks mom! The day my dad and I did the experiment for placing the cloth on top of the structure and fixing it with clips, something we weren't expecting happened. When half of the clips were placed, a cell wind started to blow and somehow the whole structure started to fly, like it took off the ground and we had to cancel the experiment. As for the lighting, we needed a bunch of soft boxes, and looking at the prices, we decided to make them ourselves as well. I designed a foldable cardboard pyramid with a reflecting interior and a paper veil to have an intense light that would cast soft shadows. And for the base of the soft boxes, we used a painting roll telescopic stick and a threaded thin metal bar, which we cut and bent to make the legs. I also had to do the electric work like peeling the cables and attaching them to the switch and the light bulb and all that stuff. I also bought a bunch of anti sleep mats to place under the green screen so the dancer, me, didn't sleep and break something. At the end of the day, everything cost around 200 euros. The choreo phase. I played the song and started to dance to it while I recorded myself. After watching the video, I did the same thing but keeping the steps I had liked and improvising the ones I hadn't. I did that till I liked the whole choreo. The recording phase. So the recording day comes, and with it, one big problem. We could not follow the diagram I had made that said the camera had to stand 4 meters away from me. There just wasn't physical space for that. So I basically didn't fit in the video and I had to be recorded in vertical which meant I had to stay in the same spot all the time. But anyway, I dressed up, my friends painted me, and we finally recorded it. <laughs> Fun fact, I messed up a bunch of steps, like this part was supposed to be just like this other part, but I fucked up and I was like, oh my god, what am I doing? Oh my god, what have I done? And it wasn't actually that bad, so we left it in. Oh, and another funny thing is that you can see that the jacket and the shirt progressively get more and more white in the neck part because we didn't know how the white paint worked and we didn't apply a fixer or anything to the paint, so that was a miss. The programming phase. First, I programmed the lyrics in Python using Blender, which is the 3D software I use for everything. It's really good and I recommend it a lot. Not sponsored. I programmed a script that read a .txt file that contained the lyrics like this and the exact second of the song in which each one of the lines appeared. Then I did a pretty similar thing with the pictograms but with images instead of text. Where did those images come from? Well, I had to make them all. Using what? Blender. <laughs> yeah, you guessed it. Again, not sponsored, but I think it's about time. I modeled and rigged this cute picto. Look at how cute it is! And for every step I rendered a pose. 
Then I used the uniform rectilinear motion formula to find where should each one of the peak toes start. Because for every peak toe, I knew the final position, the time it should take it to get there, and the speed. Because I made it up. I just tried to be the closest to the real game. So the program solved that equation for XO to find where should each one of the peak toes start, and then move them at a uniform speed to the left. The beating platform was also programmed, and it was really simple. I just found out the BPM of the song, and programmed the beating animation to happen every 1 divided by BPM minutes. The artistic phase. This is the part I enjoyed the most doing. There isn't much I can say but to show you the models and the scenes and all that stuff, that's actually really cool. I have to say some scenes were rendered in the new real-time rendering engine Blender has, that's called Eevee, but the most complex scenes, like the boulevard ones, I had to use path tracing rendering to achieve a more realistic result. These complex scenes animations took around 20 hours to render. The I want to die face. The f***ing rotoscope. Yeah, I hate that bitch. In After Effects, I had to select which areas of the footage I wanted to be white, and I had to do that shit frame by frame. And if that wasn't enough, in some frames my hands got out of the green screen and I had to fix that by hand. Again, frame by frame. The editing phase. As the animations were rendered, I added them to the final video and applied to them some effects, like the rays here, the film grain, or the chromatic aberration. Finally, I added the choose your coach screen and some transitions, and there you go! With this video, I don't just want you to know how much work we put in it, but I also want to encourage you to be creative and make your projects come true because you're the only one that's meant to make them true. So that's how I made the Blinding Lights video. I hope you enjoyed it, and I'd like to thank all the people that watched, liked and commented on the video. You're the best. And if you're not already, you don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button. See you soon, bye!